Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race Race and Strategy Guide. We're in the Group 4 machinery for this week's race and once again we are off to Autodromo Lago Maggiore. It's the full course, it's the original layout. I understand the complaints about how often we visit this location. We were here a couple of weeks ago in the Group 2 cars, albeit full course in reverse, but there's also been a nation's race and a manufacturer's race in the recent weeks eh, around one of the alternative layouts. So I get the complaints we visit this location maybe a little bit too often over the full scope of sport mode. Anyway, for this week's race we have 10 laps to get round, tie wear at times 1, fuel at times 7, medium and hard tyres available, just the hard tyres being mandatory, BOP is on, damage is light, it's a rolling start and slipstream is real. And yes, those settings will seem familiar, we have kind of done them a number of times over the last few months, I think at the Nürburgring, eh, Watkins Glen springs to mind as well. And yeah, on those occasions, we had a couple of different strategies to test, and that is going to be the case for this one as well. The test car, before we move on to the strategies, is going to be the Audi TT. Seems to be the meta car in Group 4 at the moment. It's going to be very well suited to this sort of combination. It's good on fuel, it's good round fast corners, and tyre wear is pretty low. So yeah, I can imagine the Audi TT is going to be one of the strongest cars for the combo just because it's got all the attributes that we're looking for in this one. So as I said we have a number of strategies we're going to take a look at in this one and first up we are going to test the flat out strategy. Remember we've got the medium and the hard tyres available so we're going to make use of those medium tyres, just run flat out, no fuel saving whatsoever, run for as long as we can on the medium tyres until we're about to run out of fuel and then we'll put on the hard tyres and we'll take on what fuel is necessary. Now if you run the Audi TT flat out, you're going to get around about 7.5 laps worth of fuel out of the car, so I decided to do a tiny little bit of fuel saving to get to the 8th lap. The thought process of that being I thought there's more benefit to doing an additional lap on the medium tyres than doing an additional lap on the hard tyres. So into the pits we're going to come now at the end of lap 8, we're on 0% fuel, 0% laps, but it says 1% fuel up in the top uh, left hand corner now. So fresh set of hard tyres on, I'm going to have to take on 2 laps worth of fuel. So up to the diamond, just beyond the diamond a little bit, just so we can rev the car out properly. 7.2 seconds where we're stationary for there now, we will take a closer look at the pit stop and then one of the strategies we're going to test out a little bit later on. But coming to the end of this one stop run, so 8 laps on the medium tyres, 2 laps on the hard tyres, no fuel saving whatsoever so we had to take some fuel on at the pit stop. Now we didn't do a very good last lap here, it has to be said, there was mistakes made on this run, no two doubts about it, half second penalty as well. Our finishing time for that flat out run was a 21.20.5, now I know I could easily take 3-4 to four seconds off that, so let's just say 21.17 as we move on to the next strategy, and that is going to be the no stop strategy, so we're going to do 10 laps on the hard tyres, fuel saving this one so we can get the 10 laps out of the fuel, and that's going to require us maybe changing gear around about 40% on average on the revs, is enough to stretch that fuel out for 10 laps. As I said earlier on in the guide, only the hard tyres are mandatory, so the no stop is a strategy that is available to us. So let's take a look at the lap times we're doing here, we're doing sort of maybe 207, low 207s when the fuel is a, well, quite a lot of fuel in the car. As that fuel kind of burns down, we've moved into the 206s, a 206.489 there being our fastest lap. Now if we compare that to what we were doing on our one stop run, uh, flat out, I think we kind of were doing low 205s to start off with, and then moving into the mid 204s as that fuel burned down. So around um, about, what, two seconds a lap of a difference for, you know, kind of on average between the laps. Now remember, you only have nine laps on the medium tyres. If we do the maths, it's not looking too promising for that one stop run. It does look like this no stop run would be a little bit faster, you know. Two seconds per lap, nine laps on the medium tyres is only 18 seconds. And well, we're going to take a look at that pit stop a little bit later on. But as we come across the start finish line here, 
to finish that no stop run as a 21.12.2 compared to a 21.20.5 which I reckon I could have maybe went 3 or 4 seconds faster that's still a 5 second difference to the no stop strategy so moving on to strategy number 3 it does look like the no stop strategy is going to be the way to go but this is another way of doing the one stop strategy so we're going to do the fuel saving we we'll do 9 laps on the medium tyres, 1 lap on the hard tyres Similar kind of rev management or fuel management as we had to do on the no-stopper, of course. But the idea of this one means that we don't have to actually take any fuel on at the pit stop. And that's going to give us an idea, or we can certainly take a look here, at how much time we're going to lose in the pits if all we do is change those tyres from the mediums to the hard. So coming into the pit lane here, not too much to worry about in terms of the white lines, either on the entry or the exit. But in we come now. 9 laps there on the medium tyres, we've got enough fuel to get to the end, we don't have to take any fuel on here, so yeah, similar fuel saving too as what we did on the no stop run, changing gear around about 40-50% to 50 on the revs will get you the 10 laps out of the Audi TT, into the pit box we come, so let's see, just to change the tyres is 3 seconds, now when we didn't change the tyres, when we took on about 25% worth of fuel, we were stationary for 7.2 seconds, so we lost 4 seconds on the fuel on the very first strategy that we tried. Just changing the tyres, you lose 22 seconds in the pits. And as we kind of seen from the previous strategy on the no-stop, we're only around about 2 seconds a lap slower. On this run, it's maybe about 1.8 seconds, maybe 1.7, 1.8 seconds a lap faster, if you like, than the no-stop. Again, you can do the maths. I don't think we're going to make up enough time on the no stopper. As we come here to finish this run though, let's take a look at what the finishing time says. It's all in the numbers at the end of the day. Yeah, 21.19.1 versus a 21.12 for the no stopper. So fairly conclusive in the end. An advantage of around about 6 or 7 seconds to the no stopper over both the one stop strategies that I tried to do. So yeah. In terms of strategy options, optimal strategy is going to be the no-stopper, 10 laps in the hard tyres, do the fuel saving, you have to do around about 40% revs average, you know, 40-50% to 50 uh, changing gear on the rev counter is going to get 10 laps out of the hard tyres, or just alternatively, when you're in a little bit of traffic, you've got a little bit of slipstream, just save the fuel where you can over the early stages and be in a better position to go a little bit harder at the race towards the end. I wouldn't completely rule out the one-stop strategies, you know, you could have a little bit of fun with them, maybe a little bit lower down the splits, this is going to be a better strategy than the no-stopper. A lot of drivers, kind of, once you get to sort of mid-A, low-A, B drivers, they find the fuel saving a lot harder than maybe the, the A-plus drivers. It's just, you know, you know, if you can carry a little bit more speed into the corner, which you tend to be able to do as an A-plus driver or a kind of higher rated driver, then the fuel saving does become a little bit easier. So maybe if you're a bit lower down the splits and you're finding you're getting jostled about too much by people on the medium tyres barging their way through of you, maybe consider one of the one-stop strategies. They might work out a little bit better for you. But in the higher splits and towards the end of the week, most people are going to gravitate towards that optimal strategy, which in this case is going to be the no-stopper. So that's pretty much all we've got to say for the strategy. Let's move on to the lap guide. We are in the Audi TT. Uh, now I'm not going to show you a kind of qualifying lap. Plenty of people will do them over the course of the week and how to get very or get a fast lap around here in the Audi TT. This is going to be a no stop fuel saving lap. Uh, come down into turn one. You're looking for the. I don't actually know where I break for turn one. Do you know that? But yeah. Coming into the second corner, down into first gear momentarily, up into second gear, get some acceleration out the corner, and then you can see as we come through here, we are maybe actually maybe getting around about 60% revs through this part of the lap. We were kind of late into the run, so probably had a little bit more fuel to play with. As the car got lighter, you don't have to be quite so aggressive with the fuel saving. But coming down here, you can see that we are changing up gear pretty early. Looking for the end of the kerb on the left-hand side there. Just after that, very tricky corner here. Get the car into that dip. You need a little bit of cam there. Help the car around. Coming up the uphill section. This is where the Audi TT is actually very strong. And uh, yeah, if you've got a little bit of fuel to burn, you can have a big advantage as you come through 
these uh, uphill sections if you've got a little bit of a fuel advantage. That's where you need the revs, that's where you need the torque of the car. But coming up onto the back straight now, you can see we're still going to change up into sixth gear here, just around about halfway up the rev counter. Coming up to Big Banky Boy, I'm looking for the green wall on the left hand side just after that, down into third gear, get it into the apex of the corner, another uphill section here, full throttle of course, but yeah, if you're having to do a lot of aggressive fuel saving, then this is where you will lose a good bit of lap time. Full throttle through this sector here, you're looking for the 50 metre board as your reference, just maybe about 10 metres before there, down into fourth gear if you look to save a bit of fuel around these last couple of corners, good place to save a little bit of fuel. Down into third tier I went though to get a little bit of rotation, and then coming into the extremely tricky last corner. Seems very tricky in this car as well, but you're looking for the kind of end of the kerb, turning in just before that, down a gear into fourth. You kind of almost take a really unnaturally early apex into that last corner. Over the start finish line we come, but that should give you an idea about what gears I'm using and where I'm upshifting just to save the fuel to get the car round for the no stopper. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Interesting enough race, you know, I actually quite like a fuel saving race, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, whether there'll be any other cars that come to the fore here, I know the NSX is good in fuel, the Jaguar's good in fuel, I just don't think they're going to be able to match this car around this track in terms of just raw speed, so I think very quickly this one will become an Audi TT1 make, which is a little bit of a shame, maybe another car will come to the fore, who knows, I hope I'm wrong in that respect, that it doesn't just become an Audi TT1 one make but yeah it definitely is looking that way from the early data we will be definitely be live streaming this one a couple of times over the course of the week do join me for them if you can if you found the video useful in some way shape or form please hit that like button please hit the subscribe button thank you very much for watching i'll catch you on the next one goodbye now